Good morning, good morning. It is a Saturday and I am having a lazy day at home with my dogs and my son. Uh, I am so grateful for this space and for all that uh, I went through before being able to be in a beautiful place like this. And I appreciate it every single day. Um, so, <laughs> I really feel like these 20 as of today, this is day 20, these 20 days of exploration and diving into this space that I'm creating and activating every single day in order to create intuitively and bring forth my authentic voice. Um, it's something that I have done and have not done as consciously as I used to for quite a while. So recreating this space and also using the new tools um, and my expanded field um, to increase the potency of the space that I'm creating has been super beneficial. And I am grateful <laughs> that you have come along for the ride to share this with me and hope that you've been experiencing activations as well. I'm going to flip you around and do the whole little supply tour, kind of the same stuff, uh, random assorted things on the table. So this is what we've got. Um, I found this makeup bag, I think, at a thrift store. So I've just got inks in there, um, my gouache scraper, watercolors, uh, watercolor markers, brushes, the pastels I was using yesterday, and my Neo Color 2. I love, love, love these. I'm really finding that I love the Caran d'Ache products. Um, I love their Neo Color 2, their water soluble crayons. I love their colored pencils. Um, the gouache set that I got from them is awesome. Hi, Ronan, are you gonna help us paint today? Are you going to help us paint? Um, and this was yesterday's spread. All right, so I am going to dive right in. Uh, speaking of those water-soluble crayons, I am going to use those. And of course, I have the water-soluble graphite that I've really been enjoying um, that I happened upon by accident. So I've got both of those here. And I've also got some gesso. Um, so I'm feeling uh, meditative again today, um, creating this space and intentionally activating this space um, with potential. Um, so potential goes beyond uh, creating, oops, broke my crayon, creating from the known. Um, potential goes into the space that we cannot see and is creating with that pure, um, pure connection to source and source energy. And so as I am activating this space, I'm allowing myself to co-create with that pure potential energy. And uh, the dogs are... <laughs> contributing here to the energy. So I'm really just digging in, uh, intuitively choosing my colors, intuitively choosing my tools, and allowing what emerges to emerge. So part of being able to create from potential and from pure possibility is, again, being able to release your need for anything specific to occur. Uh, release the need for a finished piece to come out of this. Release the need to be able to show this on social media to prove um, and to get approval. So proving, right, to get approval um, from anyone in particular, uh, from clients, from friends, from relatives. Um, releasing the need for even, you know, since this is an activated space, even releasing the need or expectation of some huge, uh, mind-blowing epiphany to happen as a result of this. And it can happen, right? So anything can happen. The field of pure potential and possibilities, anything can happen. And in order for the alchemy to happen, we do need to be able to detach from that um, required outcome, from any requirements, really. Um, I'm really, really loving, um, like I said, these are one of my favorite supplies. Um, another of my favorite supplies I haven't used much recently are the Faber-Castell Gelatos, um, which I just, 
I have so many supplies that I really, really love and most of them are in storage. So I've been slowly pulling them out of storage and I found a couple bins that I have stacked inside our space here, our living space. Um, that are gradually filling <laughs> with the supplies that I'm unearthing from storage um, here and there. So, um, and bringing them back into use because um, I've mentioned we, we didn't haven't had the space or the light, the, the natural light in our last couple of living environments for the last couple of years. And so I'm really grateful now to have the space, um, to have the light and, um, you know, I've always really preached, I guess, um, do what you can with what you have, and that's the example that I've set. Um, and, you know, it's not necessary to expect to have to settle, right? When you have things that you are dealing with, um, you know, making the most of things and um, working with untangling the, the shadows that have, um, you know, created any kind of limitations always. A good thing I mean a good thing to do and um, you know when there's a chance to choose something new then it's worth looking at you know why you wouldn't choose what you really want why we are taught to dumb down our true desires and hide our true desires from ourselves from ourselves um, you know, why we are taught to um, go for kind of the least common denominator, um, which I noticed that I have done with client work, that when I have been asked in the past to price commissions or web design work, that I've always kind of asked myself and presented an offer that was the, the most I could do for the least amount. Um, you know, being afraid that people would say no, being afraid that, um, you know, I wasn't serving people or contributing to people if I didn't sacrifice myself. Because the truth is, you know, in order to create the magic that I create, I do have certain requirements and I was denying those requirements. You know, in order to create a beautiful website, I really need the time. Um, and in order to have, to be able to use as much time as I really need to create true magic, um, it does require a significant investment. Um, I do, you know, need to be paid for my time so that I can provide for my own tribe. Um, and I have been denying that, right? I've been sacrificing myself for years with my artwork. I've been told, you know, that I needed to give it away for free and that, you know, that was my service. And so I ended up prostituting myself um, for approval, for somebody else's approval, um, in order to meet somebody else's requirements of what they thought that I should offer and how and who should receive it and, you know, how much of my, more of myself that I need to give in order to be uh, approved of and or um, supported, not supported, you know, I haven't been supported. Um, financially in that respect but I guess in order for you know for me to be recommended and then I became recommended as being the cheap person to go to <laughs> instead of like oh she creates magic it's wonderful it's worth the investment I was getting oh yeah she'll do it for cheap and so I would end up um, running myself ragged um, trying to create magic with limited resources um, whereas you know if we're fully invested, true magic can be created, then it's not a lowest common denominator, then it's not, you know, I do as much for my clients as I can, and I, it's not my job to um, bleed myself dry. So there's a lot of, you know, exploration that's happened there. Um, and I'm pulling out these chalk pastels and feeling into where these want to go, these marks want to go. And the color choices are happening naturally. I didn't set down with a certain color palette in mind. Um, remember, in order to be available to possibilities, we do need to free ourselves from the agenda, from the expectations, um, 
you know, and so I've, I've watched a lot of videos, you know, and learned a lot about color theory and cohesive color palettes and all of that. And there have been times when I have gone out of the intuitive space and um, my son's calling me, so he might <laughs> interject here um, in a minute. But there have been times when I have, you know, kind of gone in with more of a plan, et cetera, and more related to, I don't know, designy things, where it wasn't so much I was focusing on, you know, alchemizing or creating this space, this potential space. Um, it, it was creating more from an agenda base place. So I've played with all of that. And, you know, there's a place for learning techniques too, just like with all of the um, healing techniques that I've been certified in and um, have practiced. Um, there's a reason for all of those. And um, with the exception of this latest um, process, which has brought me so much um, empowerment and nourishment, um, I have not, like I took what I needed from them. And that's kind of the more intuitive way of, of going about life is not, oh, you know, I got this degree, so now I have to do this for the rest of my life, or oh, I got this certification, so now I have to, you know, bow down to whatever this self-proclaimed guru um, dictates. You know, there have been a couple modalities I have studied where the leaders of the modalities got too into ego and, um, you know, really speaking um, from shadow a lot of the time and then blaming it on you know, their students or their clients. Um, so they weren't taking responsibility. Um, and so while there were things I liked about the modality and things that I learned and um, things from which I benefited, you know, there also comes a time when it's time to move on. And if you've been following this journey so far, you now you heard me speak earlier on about the, how essential it is to find your own voice and create with your own authentic voice instead of relying on someone else and you know an expression, someone else's expression that maybe is proven to sell. Um, oh, this person does that and people buy their stuff, so I'm gonna do that. Um, you know, I'm gonna create a piece that looks like that because they sold a piece that looks like that. Um, this teacher created a piece that looks like that, so I am just going to copy that and then call it my own because I was able to uh, use similar techniques. Um, it's really about diving into the unknown. You know, that's what the, the dark, um, the dark void, you know, that space before creation um, is all about is being able to hear what comes next without being able to see what comes next and being willing to take the next step even though um, you may feel nervous and afraid and blind um, because there's no guarantee of a certain result. There's no, um, this is all new. When you're creating from potential, you're not basing anything on a template. You're not um, following in anyone else's footsteps. In anyone else's footsteps, you are making your own footprints. And um, it takes a lot of courage. Don't get me wrong, it takes a lot, a lot of courage. And, um, you know, self-doubt might pop up along the way. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you might experience. But ultimately, it's all about coming back to our own authority. You know, it's time to stop giving our power away to someone who says that they know better than we do or someone who, um, you know, conditionally accepts us, you know, or, or will... Um, you know, let us play if we um, turn off our own expression. These are all breaking. And, um, you know, follow their method or parrot their method. Um, you know, I had one, there was one certification that I got a couple years ago, and the um, founder of the modality took me off of her web page because um, I was questioning, you know, why there was so much ego involved and um, why there was so much submission that she required and um, why she required people connect to her in order to be nourished where we should all be able to connect and receive nourishment ourselves. 
you know, self-sourcing, self-sovereignty, um, the modality that I'm currently working with focuses so much on that, not the guru worship, but the um, in, like individuation where we are individuals. And um, yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's so much going on that at any given time that it really is a unique process and not everyone's going to resonate with the same things. Um, we do go through journeys, so there are tools that you may resonate with at one time and you may have only encountered them, you know, in order to get some kind of energetic download and then once you've gotten that download, that modality has served its purpose for you and it's not needed. So these sense, the sense of loyalty um, that is required from some of these self-proclaimed gurus, whether, you know, art teachers, quote art teachers, or um, spiritual teachers or whatnot, um, the amount of kind of bow down and submit that they require um, astonishes me. Um, you know, the reason that I am offering these sessions is because it is a journey that I am making and I do feel compelled to share it. And also because, um, it just, it feels resonant. <laughs> it feels resonant and there is no logic behind it. You know, I haven't sat down and made out a whole plan of what comes next and how each day is gonna be laid out. And there are a lot of people who require that kind of knowledge ahead of time. I'm just putting some ink on this plastic thing. I'm gonna dab it around. Um, so there's people who require because they are afraid of that pure possibility. Um, they are afraid to strike out on their own. You know, what if I create something that's not proven? What if I create something, you know, what if I stay invisible, um, et cetera. And the truth is, as you guys, I have been, you know, offering videos like this and creating for at least five years now. And I am not any kind of famous artist. I am not rolling in hundreds of thousands of dollars um, on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, the way, one of the ways that I know that this is my pure and true expression is because I'm still doing it. Um, I wasn't doing this. I didn't set out to do this conditionally. I didn't set out and say, I'm only going to do this until, and I'm going to do it this way until a certain number of people like me or a certain you know, amount of income comes in or whatever. This isn't a means to an end, and that's kind of the whole point um, of why I'm leading you all through this is that it is a process. And it is a process of discovery. It is a process of adventure. It is a process of courage. Um, now I'm feeling drawn to use some of this ink, this yellow and incredible ink. Um, and got out this trusty brush. So I'm just gonna whoop, add this across in places. Um, so yeah, just it's, it's, it's about honoring your own process, but in order to honor your own process, you have to be willing to find it. You have to be willing to try things that may or may not work out um, in order to you know, pick up your own codes that you have left for yourself to find in various spaces. Uh, it is not a linear process. You may find yourself um, getting frustrated at times. You might find, might find yourself, um, you know, feeling alone or feeling um, like people don't understand you. I mean, if you're a pioneer, if you're really here for your authentic, unique soul expression, then you are gonna be different um, from other people. And it's kind of up to you what your priorities are. Your priorities, prostituting yourself for um, temporary approval from others, or is your priority to, to find out what your unique song really is and to sing that as loudly as possible. I mean, it really is your choice, so.
<laughs> no judgment either way. Um, I am, of course, here to encourage you to be yourself, to, to explore the uncharted depths, that dark void, uh, and you absolutely don't have to, right? Um, so now I'm feeling, okay, I want to use my scraper and some gesso here. I'm just going to spread this across. Um, And just add some of this in various places. And you know, the way that I'm creating is just, I'm just giving you examples. And you know, as I'm doing this, um, it increases the integrity of the space that I'm able to hold for you to explore as well. So, I am playing myself and I am creating and holding this space energetically um, for you to feel safe to explore and play. All right, so I've got that now. Feeling like using the back of my brush to kind of Don't ask why, I don't ask why, I just do it. So I'm just kind of etching into that paint. And I'm not feeling like I want to use any markers. I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to get out the gouache, which I have not yet opened today. And... No, I feel like I'm even going to use this brush that came with this set and feeling like this blue is the color I'm going to use. So I am just dampening that and then, oh, and that was totally accidental, but apparently <laughs> that was my next step. Um, so everything's perfect, right? Just continuing to add some more marks. And feeling into it, so I'm just adding some more water and pulling up some more wash. And Moving around my spread here. And things are evolving, right? So um, I think as I mentioned in maybe yesterday's video, um, you may find yourself wanting to come back to some of these spreads at a later time and add to them. And you may not. Um, there is no right or wrong, but there's... And <laughs> because there's no right or wrong, there's... Um, nothing wrong with coming back and editing something if you're editing it from that place of inspiration um, I mean again not to make judgments like there's something wrong with it if you do um, if you do things another way feeling like I want to um, dab, dip into this yellow gouache which is becoming green because I have um, blue on my brush and I'm just letting that happen and adding some more texture kind of inspired movement inspired creation and I'm just feeling into this I think I want to, I feel like I'm going to pull out this blue and just make some marks. Across 
And again, I'm just feeling into this. So when I'm, say feeling in, I mean, I'm literally, one good way to practice um, your intuition and practice feeling into things is to try. So what I'm literally doing is kind of hovering my hand around places on the paper. And then if it feels like, okay, I want to put my hand down here and make a mark, then I do. And there's places where I put my hand or I hover my hand over and I don't feel like making a mark there, so I don't. Kind of hover over and like, okay, it feels right to put my hand down here. It doesn't feel um, resonant or, again, not that it's right or wrong, it's just kind of an internal feeling. Everybody's gonna be different, um, but it's one way to really create um, intuitively is to test things out. Kind of like when you dip your toe into the water and like, no, that's too hot or that's too cold or whatever. Um, this feels like another one up here. Here. Here, here, here. And it feels like kind of right there in the center. And And kind of over some more marks it feels like and and that is feeling is that maybe a little more there that is feeling pretty close Add that I'm just again dragging my hand around kind of testing feels like a little bit up there a little bit there um, So yeah, um, just again to reiterate, um, challenge yourself if you feel so inspired uh, to create without an agenda, without needing to show it to anybody, without um, having to make yourself look good, without having to make yourself look any way at all, just being you, you know, can you be you? And can you be you without apology, without needing to prove anything, without needing to qualify anything, like why you're doing something or what your experience or your expertise or why you are you know, an authority or anything like that. Um, put aside all of that. Put aside needing to be an authority. I invite you to put aside um, any of that proving energy and just play. Get back to that space of pure creation and of play and um, the innocence of you know childhood before we've accumulated all this programming um, and traumas and all kinds of things that we end up processing later. I invite you and I would love to hear about your journey. All right, coming in close for today's texture exploration. Really see how much is going on there um, with the graphite, with the pastels, with the water soluble crayons, and the inks. Just a lot of depth, a lot of texture, and richness. The richness of pure, bold unique expression. And there's the view from up above. So once again, thanks for joining me. And uh, yeah, this is the 20th session. Uh, I'm going to keep going until at least 30. So we're about two thirds of the way there. And again, without expectation or, all right, if I'm two thirds of the way there, I've already had two thirds of the results. Get results out of your mind. Get an agenda out of your mind. Get impatience out of your mind and really come to center and allow yourself to create from that space. And I'll see you tomorrow.